Apparently there's an old episode of Sesame Street that hasn't re-aired for decades because it was too frightening for children. In 1976, the beloved children's show Sesame Street did something unexpected. They released an episode that became so controversial that it has been shelved ever since. Its overwhelming backlash led to it being locked away and supposedly banned for over 40 years. But then, miraculously, in 2022, the episode mysteriously and quietly appeared online. And it wasn't a shoddy leak recorded from a phone. It was the entire episode. How did this happen? This is the search for Sesame Street, episode 847. And pause. I want to take a quick moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, Sempered. Because I've been subscribed to Sempered for many years before they reached out. I can personally tell you that they are awesome. And now that people are going outside and traveling again, there's never been a better time to smell your best. Sempered is a subscription-based service that delivers clones and perfumes to you. How it works is simple. Every month, you can pick up a fragrance on their website or app to be delivered to you. If you find one you really like, order it again or skip next month with no penalties. With over 600 brands, ranging from categories like classy, office, date night, to even the different seasons, you'll absolutely find something you'll love. And if not, or if you're undecided, Semper has a preference quiz to help you find your next favorite scent. Some of their fragrance bottles could go for hundreds of dollars, but Semper is only $17 a month. And if you use my promo code BLAMEIT, you get 55 off your first month. This month I got thrown by English Laundry, Sage Supreme by Mason 21G, and one of my favorites, Confessions of a Rebel. Again, use the code BLAMEIT for 55% off your first month. Thanks again to Semper for partnering with me on this video. Check out the links below. Since its inception in 1969, Sesame Street has been one of the most acclaimed programs in children's television. In an effort to teach their young viewers valuable lessons, the show has had plenty of special guests on its program, like Ryan Reynolds, John Legend, Jack Black, and countless others. One of their most infamous, however, was the late Margaret Hamilton, the actress who played the Wicked Witch of the West in 1939's The Wizard of Oz. And as for you, my fine lady, it is true, I can't attend you here and now as I'd like, but just try to stay out of my way. Just try. I'll get you, my pretty, and your little dog, too. <laughs> as a former kindergarten teacher herself, Hamilton agreed to appear as the witch for a seventh season episode. Quote, I see no reason why learning shouldn't be fun, and Sesame Street demonstrates that it can be a very happy experience. So, after 30 years, Hamilton reprised her iconic role and paid a visit to Sesame Street. The episode aired on February 10th, 1976. The episode was reported in a press release to teach about, quote, the emotion of fear and planning. It starts with Hamilton as the Wicked Witch, losing her broom in Sesame Street. The broom falls in the hands of crew member David, who refuses to return it, fearing the havoc it might cause. The witch threatens to turn Big Bird into a feather duster and make it rain inside Hooper's store, but her threats are futile. The witch spends the rest of the episode trying to get her broom back, and even disguises herself as a regular old woman. At one point, Oscar the Grouch falls for her, and Big Bird grows to like her. By the end, she reclaims her broom and flies away, before humorously dropping it again. Now, 
Now, immediately after the episode aired, Sesame Workshop was inundated with letters from angry parents. One letter states, The witch that visits your program truly frightens my daughter. This particular character has been criticized by three different fellow parents. Another writes, I wish you wouldn't put that witch on Sesame Street anymore, because I dream about that witch at bedtime. Yet another letter states, My three and a half year old son has been very disturbed and frightened by the witch episode. Children were apparently terrified of the program, and these letters painted the segment as literal nightmare fuel, or the work of Satanism, and it all centered on Margaret Hamilton as the Wicked Witch. Contrary to popular belief, the episode did not air just once. Based on Sesame Street's schedule at the time, episodes usually aired twice a day, once in the morning and once in the afternoon. And one parent's letter suggests that it re-aired on the 29th as well. According to the CTW archives, the episode's overwhelming negative reception prompted Sesame Street's research team to conduct more test screenings. The screenings were held between March 1st and March 5th, 1976, and included a test audience of 26 children. They found that the children were, quote, exceptionally attentive during the segments featuring the witch, but not frightened. Quote, Whenever the witch appeared on the screen, all conversation ceased, and the youngsters became completely motionless and attentive to the segment. The data collected was largely inconclusive. The children had mixed feelings about the witch's presence, and most were happy about her departure. Quote, When asked if the kids on the set were afraid, the responses were half negative and half affirmative. Since children identify more with the kids on the show than with other cast members, it was expected that this last question would be a key to their own feelings. But the data obtained are not conclusive enough to be used in determining if the children were indeed afraid. This conclusion, coupled with the angry letters, was enough to convince Sesame Workshop to deem the episode unsafe for children. Thus, it ceased airing on television and was never released on any form of home media. Quote, Due to the parents' reactions, the contents on their letters, and our impressions from the group observation data, we suggest that the Margaret Hamilton show not be rerun. Hi, neighbor. We're going to have a treat today, a special treat, because a very fine actress is coming to visit our neighborhood. Her name is Margaret Hamilton. Here's a picture of her. Margaret Hamilton must have been devastated by the news being an advocate for children's education herself. Around the same time, she appeared on three episodes of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. The third one, 1459, aired just nine days after the Sesame Street incident. Fred Rogers invited Hamilton onto his program to discuss her role, and she even puts on her witch costume. Rogers wanted to show his young viewers that the witch was just pretend, and nothing to be afraid of. You know, witches are like make-believe. They're pretend. And when you see witches on television, or in the movies, or read about witches in books, they're always pretend. When you're growing up, it's an important thing to be able to tell the difference between what's pretend and what's real. Despite their efforts, the Sesame Street episode remained locked away after only a few airings. Margaret Hamilton continued acting and making guest appearances as the witch up until her death in 1985. By the turn of the century, Episode 847 was seldomly talked about, almost becoming something of an urban legend. There were a few early threads on the fan-made site Muppet Central, but they mainly consisted of people's questions and loose recollections of the episode. I need someone to set the record straight. 
did Margaret Hamilton make a guest appearance on Sesame Street and reprise her role as some sort of wicked witch, like from The Wizard of Oz? I remember this episode scaring the daylights out of me, especially the thought of the witch turning Big Bird into a feather duster. In one response, it was even mentioned that Carl Spinney, the actor who played Big Bird, supposedly recalled this as his favorite episode. But the search hadn't really begun until June 3rd, 2016. At this point, only a few images and a newspaper scan were available online. The episode's obscurity prompted Muppet Central user Gravy to create a thread on the forums. This whole thing started because I saw an Instagram post. Uh, it was like one of those like corny like Instagram pages that was like scary facts or something. And it was like, one time Sesame Street made an episode so scary, they vowed never to show it again. And I was like, I was interested. So I looked it up and there was like almost nothing on it except like the Muppet Wiki page. So I was like, mm, why isn't anybody, you know, looking at this, looking this up and stuff like that. So I I made the thread and my first post I I kind of overhyped it I'm not gonna lie but I uh, you know that that was really like the start of the search. <laughs> this thread inspired much discussion and speculation about the episode's whereabouts. Was it locked away for being too frightening, or maybe was there a copyright issue concerning the Wicked Witch of the West? Perhaps Margaret Hamilton's estate prevented the episode's release. Whatever the reason, that did not stop user Blue Frackle from emailing Sesame Workshop directly, but he received, quote, no response. He believed Sesame Workshop feared that releasing the episode would tarnish its reputation, but this was just a guess. What we do know is that Gravy decided to contact Carol Spinney. A letter was sent, and the search continued. I was like trying to scavenge like, every, every, like, every place, every person I could find, I could contact that, you know, might have it. And I was like, you know, this guy, he said it was his favorite episode, and who else, you know, who better to contact? So obviously I decided to contact him. I went on those, you know, like, old fan mail websites where it shows you, like, the address of a celebrity that hasn't been updated since, like, the 2000s. And I, I tried my luck, you know, and uh, I sent it out. Uh, no response. Hmm. So a couple months later, I tried to send it again. I'm pretty sure one of those times my letter got stolen. I have no clue why, but either way, I didn't receive a response. And I was just, I just figured, you know, after the second time, there was, there was no point. A year passed by without much development. A few backstage photos, including some featuring Margaret Hamilton, were found. But Carol Spinney, nor Sesame Workshop, ever responded. However, on July 30th, 2017, a breakthrough in the search was made. A user named Nitrate Nerd contacted Craig Shimon, the president of the Jim Henson Legacy, whom he was friends with. Craig confirmed that the episode was removed for being too frightening, and that he, quote, might try to see if they're willing to do a screening of Lost Sesame Stuff. This was good news. It confirmed the episode's existence, and that Sesame Workshop did own a copy, which was all up to debate until now. And a private screening of the episode for fans would be the perfect solution, as there's less chance for a child to watch it. Later on, I learned uh, Nitrate Nerd and Craig were apparently, you know, like old buddies. They lent equipment, camera equipment to each other and stuff like that. So I was like, okay, okay, this is the start to something. Because, you know, in the 40-something years that this show has been on, you don't know what survives. So I was excited to hear that this existed at all and the possibility that many other things exist at all. So it was definitely a step forward. Another year had passed, and Gravy decided to visit the Children's Television Workshop at the University of Maryland in search of any more documentation about episode 847. Apart from discovering some of the handwritten letters sent in by angry parents from 1976, Gravy also encountered an episode guide for season 7 of Sesame Street. However, quote, 
It seems as if they removed A46 and A47. So I, I was looking through the season 7 folder for all the season guides, for all the episodes and everything. And I was looking through and uh, I saw that 847 was missing from there. I mean, along with 846, but I'm sure that wasn't as an interesting of an episode. But I, I found it interesting that this episode that stirred up a lot of talk inside the workshop, they completely kept the guide out of it, you know. Uh, maybe it was because past that point they weren't giving, you know, episode highlights out to anybody. I have no clue why I was missing. <laughs> uh, it, it's, it was just gone. And that was off-putting because I, I, I kept flipping through. I kept flipping through. I was like, maybe it's just misplaced. It was not in the folder. And that just, that was a little, a little strange to me. But then, in 2019, everything changed. Up until this point, most of the search consisted of speculation and minor leads. But on February 14th of the same year, a collaboration between the American Archive of Public Broadcasting and Sesame Workshop was announced. The Library of Congress stated that Sesame Street has, quote, donated a collection of digitized episodes from the past 50 years of Sesame Street to be preserved for posterity. The Sesame Street collection will be available to view on site at the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C., and by appointment at WGBH in Boston. This collection consisted of nearly 4,500 episodes, including several iconic moments and songs from Sesame Street's earlier years. However, it was unclear if the coveted Wicked Witch episode would be included. Not only that, but the archive was available to view on site, meaning that even if A47 was included, you'd have to travel to Washington and make an appointment. Regardless, I eagerly waited and hoped for the best. But then, something really unexpected happened. Just about a week after the event was announced, a never-before-seen image of episode 847 appeared online. It supposedly came from one of the admins of the Muppet Wiki named Radiant8. And he had told Gravy, quote, All I can say is that the episode isn't lost, and hopefully, someone will share more about it at some point this year. The quality of the image gave little doubt to its authenticity. This wasn't an archive still or a decades-old remnant. This image was taken from some kind of master tape. Oh my gosh, that was a day. Okay, I here's how it happened. Here's how it all went down. I was waking up from a nap, and I got a Discord text message. I was like, have you seen this? And I saw it, and I was looking at it, and I was like, I, I had to double check that I was not still asleep. So I, I, I just kept staring at the photo. I was like, oh my gosh, man. We are getting somewhere here, and I, I was like, this, it was very exciting. And, you know, people said, oh, probably came from Library of Congress, probably came from blah, 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 blah. Um, but I know a handful of people, including myself, they contacted uh, the Muppet Wiki admin that uploaded this photo. And we were like, where is it from? Where is it from? Where is it from? And what's his name? Radio Nate. He was like... All I can say is that the episode isn't lost, and hopefully someone will share more about it at some point this year. Later that year, the Museum of the Moving Image announced an interesting event called Lost and Found. It was a screening of the show's rare segments held in New York. The event took place in November 2019 and included special guests Rosemary Trulio and Norman Stiles who both work for Sesame Workshop. Quote, A panel of insiders will shed light on such stories as why Margaret Hamilton, who played the Wicked Witch of the West in The Wizard of Oz, never reappeared. Now, I remember when this event was first announced. It was pretty big news to me. Episode 847 was a well-known mystery at this point, and something of a holy grail for lost media enthusiasts, Sesame Street fans, 
and just fans of TV in general. I could not pass up the opportunity to watch what I've been locked away for so long. I purchased my ticket, packed my things, and headed to Times Square. Recording was obviously prohibited during the event, but they did show a myriad of other well-known lost Sesame Street clips, like Wendy, Cracks, and even some of the elusive divorce episode, which is still completely lost, but that's a different story. Until at long last, Stephanie D'Abruzzo came onto the stage to introduce the next thing they're showing, episode 847. They didn't play the entire episode. I mean, obviously, that would be like an hour long. But my eyes gleamed as I finally watched the Wicked Witch episode. At the end of the event, I introduced myself to Norman Styles and asked, are there any plans to release 847? And he said, no. According to him, Sesame Workshop are just too embarrassed by the whole ordeal. And that is supported by the angry letters. I respected his answer and cared for the material, but I couldn't help but feel disappointed. And that was that. I left knowing that I was one of the few who watched the long-lost Wicked Witch episode of Sesame Street, the one that hadn't aired since 1976. Or so I thought. I can't leave without it. I'm about to get it back. I've got to make a plan of some sort. Oh, what can I do? Don't dare. Almost as quickly as the event ended, leaks of A47 began appearing online. The most widely circulated was this one. A shaky recording from a smartphone. I guess I shouldn't be too surprised, given the rarity of the episode. I, it might have been like... A week after, I don't know when, I don't know when. Initially after the screening, you know, people were posting leaks of like the divorce episode and like cracks and all the audience reactions and stuff like that. But everybody was a little bit scared to just post the witch audio or video or anything that anybody took because like, you know, you don't know what's going to come after that. Especially, you know, for such like a hush hush screening, like they wanted to keep that whole entire thing discreet. So right after the screening, I do remember a couple screenshots popping up. I remember it came from 4chan, mm -hmm. and uh, then things started to rile up, you know? Because people were posting the link here and there, and, you know, even though it was, like, a really bad camera quality, you know, type of thing, it was like, if we're trying to get any more of this episode, we should probably respect what was going on in the theater and try to keep this away from the masses. Yeah. I remember there was like a big fight in like the comments of the archive.org upload because like people were like, no, you shouldn't have this up because da 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 da. And they were like, no, it's for preservation. And everybody was just like, ugh. And everybody was ganging up on each other and there were like two sides to this whole thing. Right. So uh, eventually <laughs> that all came to a close when talk of the event and leaks and stuff like that were banned. And you know, it, the whole thing became, like, so hush-hush after that. On June 18th, 2022, after years of searching and speculating, it finally happened. The coveted Wicked Witch segment is uploaded to Reddit by a user known as Sarsa Perilla 170170. This user has made no other posts or comments, besides one, a download link to the entire episode, which has since been removed. You know something? You have got to be the most beautiful person I have ever seen. Oh, keep still. Wow, I think I'm in love. <sighs> I was, I was kind of astonished, I'm not gonna lie. Because uh, this is like one of the 
most prioritized like pieces of lost media period mm-hmm. so this was this was like huge especially the fact that it came anonymously from reddit on a random day i mean we i we got the whole thing and listen the fact that it was like it was like a studio copy this was not a tv recording this was not copy from a tv station or a cast member or anything like that. this was the recording Shortly after this discovery, I was invited to conversate with the leaker. Unfortunately, they remained completely anonymous and were quite vague with the details. They seemed to have only wanted to end the search. News of the leak erupts online. Where the leak originated from is a matter of debate. But there are some things to discern. After the Sesame Street Lost and Found event, episode 847's page on the Muppet Wiki was updated with screenshots from the episode, including segments that weren't shown during the event. This raised an important question. Where did these images come from? The Muppet Wiki as well as the Muppet fan site Tough Pigs, were inundated with questions, yet they couldn't disclose their source. Perhaps they received it straight from the workshop. Others speculate that it could have been a TV station copy that was never returned or destroyed after its initial airing. More interestingly, in October of 2021, the American Archive of Public Broadcasting experienced a data breach. According to their Twitter account, quote, a user improperly downloaded episodes of Sesame Street that were restricted to AAPB premises. The American Archive of Public Broadcasting has arranged for takedowns of these episodes from the Internet Archive and YouTube. This raises yet another question. If the breach had been patched back in October, why did it take over eight months for the episode to appear online? especially since the AAPB seemed to have taken immediate action and the leaker himself wanted to end the search hastily. Or could none of this be true? Could the leaker have gone the episode from an alternate source, immediately took it to Reddit, and been done with it? It would explain why re-uploads of the episode have not been taken down by the AAPB, but that remains to be seen. Nevertheless, one of my personal holy grails of lost media has been found. Lost media being found in bizarre ways are rare, but they do happen. Anonymous collectors and unconfirmed sources make the search all the more fun and unexpected. You just never know how something will turn up. But there is just one last thing to talk about. See, the divorce episode... (laughs) I, I see it like, you know, this is the exact same thing people were saying at the start of the 847 search. It's very hard to see it come to uh, come to the light of day, but listen, when you got this, you never know. There's a lot of things we could be embarking on. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Thank you to everyone who supports me on Patreon. And I want to give a special thanks to Gravy for providing so much insight into the search. And one final thanks to Sempered for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to click the link below and use the promo code BLAMEIT for 55% off your first month. Take care everyone, I love you all, and I'll see you next time.